Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some people that broke the petty meter. I asked my husband for some alone time last night, but he was too tired. I get up with the baby six times a night, he sleeps till three, and he burnt my spoon! But this morning when he woke up and said, Honey, will you make me some breakfast? I said, Of course, my dear, my love, whom I love more than anything in the world. I would be so happy to make you breakfast. I will make you a wonderful, <laughs> special breakfast. <laughs> Unluckily for him, I woke up this morning and decided to be a petty ass. <laughs> Wow. Oh, is it going to be really small? Yeah. Breakfast fit for a mouse. Oh, look at that little goblet. <laughs> so cute. I bet he still ate it, honestly. I would. The bread with butter was a little generous. <laughs> <laughs> like the amount of time and effort that went into doing this just so that you could prove a point and be petty. Gorgeous, darling. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh. Ma'am, three bacon bits is far too many. <laughs> I'm generous. Oh, so generous. Look at you. A balanced breakfast. Only the best for my man. <laughs> that, FYI, was sarcasm. I love you right now. You, complete stranger, I love you. I do, I immediately like you. I immediately like you because you're petty. Deliciously petty. This is by far the pettiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> so this guy and I have been dating long distance for a while and I finally saw him in real life. And after a couple days, things were just off. So while he slept, I checked his phone and sure enough, he had been texting his flatmate the most gross and untrue things about what him and I were getting up to behind closed doors. I just thought to myself like, A, what a douche canoe, but also B, no one does me dirty like that. So I decided while he slept to plot his revenge. The next morning he went to work and I took one shoelace from every pair of shoes that he owned. I cut the top two buttons off all his business shirts so he couldn't tie his tie because he had to wear a suit to work. I then got his remote office fob, put it in a cup of water, put it into the freezer. I went searching around the house for anything that required batteries, remote controls, and took them all. I then also untuned all of his guitars. I took all of it, the batteries, the shoelaces, with me to LAX. I pieced out without a word. Wow, babe. That is some expert level petty. Respect. Honestly, I think if we could all find out what locker room talk actually is, to find out what they actually say about us, none of us would know any men. Like, I don't think we would at all. I mean, it also goes without saying that girls sit around and, you know, talk about your size and make fun of you. Oh, we do that too, don't worry. I knew it! Nobody wants to know that someone's talking about you like that, you know? Must have been bad for you to do that. You thought about everything. Ever been so mad you can't sleep? I had 10 hours to scan the room and plot. I would have paid to see the expression on his face. You probably would have tormented him for like years to come. He's probably still looking for those batteries, but every time he goes to use it, anything that requires batteries, he's gonna go to use it. It's not gonna work, but he's not gonna check everything that requires batteries. You know, he's gonna use it periodically as he needs it. So it'll just be like one thing after another. Diabolical. <laughs> So I was dating this guy who broke up with me after like two months and he was obsessed with taking baths in his jetted tub. <laughs> so when I gave him the box of his stuff back, I also threw in a bath bomb that was full of glitter and I took the label off so he couldn't read it. And um, he wasn't really happy and he was texting me how upset he was to go to work covered in glitter. And I just responded <laughs> to all of his text messages with pictures of Edward from Twilight. And then I covered his entire gravel driveway in a big thing of glitter. <laughs> So that every time he walks in his house, he tracked glitter in. And then um, I also put his phone number in to the eHealth website for um, health insurance quotes. And he probably got 200 phone calls. And I also decorated his house with happy birthday um, banners because <laughs> he forgot to call me on my birthday. And now we're married and having a baby. No, absolutely not. Oh, that's the plot twist of the century. See, you're not only being petty, you're adding beauty to his life. <laughs> I'm just gonna sprinkle some glitter all over your life. Oh my God, I was not expecting you to say that. I thought that that was gonna be a breakup story, but no, no, you're you're married. Oh, he took it up to a whole new level with keeping your friends close and your enemies closer. Honestly, just marry your enemy. Isn't that how it usually works? Or do they become your enemy later? How to get revenge on a cheating ex. 
Okay, keys. Markers. Labeling the keys. Throwing them everywhere. Wait, hold on. What are those keys for? Oh, it's his phone number. Oh. Oh, so every time someone finds a key, they're gonna call the number. Oh. At first I was like, babes, was that his house key? Did you write his address on that? No, absolutely not. But uh, no. Phone numbers. If it's just a random key, then like, whatever. Different if it's like a key that actually opens his house, right? But if it's just a random key, who gives a <laughs> Yeah, I just wanna like grab the petty, you know, just. People saying it's illegal, it's not his key. You can buy random keys in bulk on the internet. Yeah, see, this is why I was like, oh, let's double check here. Cause like, I don't wanna condone nothing. I was paying attention this time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're just random keys with his phone number that people are going to want to return out of the goodness of their heart. And as a result, his phone will ring nonstop. It's so deliciously evil. I thought they made copies of his house key because I'm crazy. <laughs> That's immediately what my mind went to. Is it because we're crazy? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> I'm not the drama. Am I the drama? No. I can't be the drama. It's confirmed. What is the pettiest thing you've done? Oh, I got a good one. In undergrad, I worked at a research facility where I did research on malaria. And I also worked there as a general helper. I did a lot of the dishwashing and things like that that I got paid for as a job. And my boss was horrible to work with to the point where I ended up hating going into work. Even though I liked the research, I was depressed when I'd work and the lady would just remind me that I was useless and I wouldn't amount to anything. The thing is, after a while, that gets boring, gets tedious, and you don't want to put up with it. So I decided to get some sweet, sweet revenge. You see, she loved drinking Coke to the point where she would drink a, about a carton a week. So what I did was one day after she left work, I went into the break room, got all of her cans of Coke, and then I poked a hole in the can where she wouldn't be able to see it. And then the next day I went into work and I watched her open every single can of Coke only to find out that they were all flat. That's nice and subtle. That I was like, mm. Are we poisoning people? It's not poisoning people. But that's nice. That's really nice. Very subtle. Just a little, a little sprinkle, right? Nice little sprinkle. She's never gonna know it's you either. Wow, the title of this is Dr. Petty. Dr. Petty! I thought you were gonna say that you gave her malaria. <laughs> Uh, me too. I was like, malaria. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't good. I like how he started with that, you know? Like, he gave the details. He's like, oh, yeah, and I work with malaria. Like, uh, yeah? I gotta have my wits about me now. Because, like, sometimes you guys are like, that's not petty. That's just awful. And it's like, no, no, I swear. It's still funny, right? I, I still think it's funny. We're good. We're good. Petty has redeemed itself. So my ex finished with me. It's actually the only ex that ever has finished with me. Um, I did not take it very well, BPD things. Um, and I almost immediately f***ed his next door neighbour very loudly with the windows open. And then as I did the walk of shame in the morning past my ex's house, I threw stones at his window and said good morning to him. I mean, we didn't speak again for about eight years after that but we're friends now so it's all good oh yeah you guys buddies okay here's the deal you're in a relationship with someone that person dumps you they cheats whatever but like while you were in a relationship they had some like hot friends you know maybe his dad was hot maybe his grandpa if that's what you're into i am speaking metaphorically of course next door neighbor is a special kind of funny because like then he's got to like see you you know <laughs> <laughs> Would you partake in a little something something with those people that he knows? I would. I think I would. I think I genuinely would. What, what am I supposed to do with that information? What is the pettiest thing you've done after the end of a relationship? And got him deported. You're just doing your civic duty. <laughs> <laughs> you said duty, Charlotte, ha ha ha. Duty, duty, duty. Stinky, stinky, poopy bum bum. Don't do drugs. So I've never done anything really petty because I, I think because I've never really had any terrible breakups, but a guy that I worked with in the Yukon, I love this story. We were all, you know, up in the Yukon working pretty isolated. He had a girlfriend, but he was cheating on her. And then she came to visit him 
And while she was visiting, she found out that he had been cheating on her. So of course she's packing her bags to go. He leaves for work. And while he's at work, she proceeds before she leaves and flies home to cut the crotch out of every single pair of underwear, shorts, jeans, pants, joggers, anything that he owns that you wear on the lower half of your body in his apartment. She cuts a hole. She cuts a crotch right out. <laughs> and the greatest thing is that when later on he went home and found out and they came back and told us the story, I could tell that like he knew he was in the wrong. He knew he was the <laughs> And I could tell that just the, the petty but also sort of comical revenge <laughs> of this cutting the crotch out or whatever kind of left him madly respecting her. <laughs> like when he told us the story, he wasn't even upset. He was like, yep, she did that. And yep, I deserve it. And it, you have to admit, it's pretty funny. It is pretty funny. That's the thing is like, ha ha, like literally ha ha. You got to have a sense of humor about it. Honestly, this story is giving like Regina George from Mean Girls. I love that he can laugh about it. It's like, all right, yeah. I bet he'll never cheat again. I'm not even mad. That's amazing. Here's how to get revenge on that guy that led you on. So I had a friend that got led on by a guy that was a total tool. We're talking sponsored by Craftsman Level Tool. And so I get a very inebriated call from her that just says, Ryan Kelly, come over, I'm sad. And I was like, well, better pop on in. I better know what happened. So I pop on in and I go, how bad is it? And she goes, he totally led me on and now he's dating a high schooler. And I was like, wow, I didn't expect felony level bad. She was like, I Whoa. know. Plus he left his stupid shirt over here. And I was like, oh. Do you want to make him jealous? And she goes, of course, why? And I go, grab your phone. Is it in your room? And she goes, yeah. Because here's the thing, guys. When there's a tool involved, he normally has super low self-esteem and can't stand it when he's not the center of attention. So all you need is a good guy friend and a photo shoot. And he will both text you back and apologize, especially if the photos look like this. Oh. Oh, dang. We getting toxic with it. I see. He texted and it's sorry. And good. Stay sorry. Stay sorry. Get out there with the trash. Burn him! Here's how to get revenge on someone who screwed you over. Take note, friends. Here's how to get revenge on someone who screwed you over. Step one, you're going to turn off your caller ID. Step number two, you're going to call Pizza Pizza and you're going to order 25 extra large pepperoni pizzas, 100 mozzarella sticks, and 200 barbecue chicken wings. The higher the cost, the more fun. <laughs> Step number three, you're going to ask for the order to be delivered and you're going to put it under their name, their address, and their number. Then the delivery guy will come and there will be a $600 bill that they will have to pay because it's under their name, their address, and their number. Enjoy the fun. Oh, that's so simple, babe. So, so simple, so effective. I wonder if pizza places actually have to deal with stuff like that, you know? Like what happens if, you know, like someone calls and it's actually not you? And then they just order pizza to your house and then you have to pay for it. Like what happens? It's not like Uber Eats where you have your credit card on file. You gotta pay for it when it gets there, don't you? I'm not paying for those. I mean, maybe not. Maybe things have updated. I haven't ordered pizza in a really, really long time, so I don't know if this would work. Anybody want to experiment with it and find out? I don't need sleep. I need answers. Okay, but don't spend 600 bucks. Just like something like a little less. Because like if you pay for the pizza and then they end up with a free pizza, then like you're kind of defeating the purpose. You're rewarding the person that screwed you over with free pizza and breadsticks. Tell me your mom is petty without telling me your mom is petty. Okay, my mom is petty, just in case. So the only reason that I'm alive right now is because my mom is petty. So my mom and my dad have been knowing each other since they was like 11 and 12 and they didn't used to like each other like at all. My mom used to be like, oh, I don't like him. He act gay. He act like a girl and blah, blah, he blah. He is gay though. <laughs> and my daddy would be like, I can't stand this little girl. She always staring at me. She got an attitude. She bad, blah, 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 right? So one day, they friend was like, oh, um, I like Philippe. I think I'm going to ask him out or whatever. And my mom was like, hold on. I like Philippe. I want to ask him out. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go out with him. They went out. They didn't like each other. But they went out again just to see, you know, if it was something there. They got married, had kids, and yeah, I'm here. Wow. Wow. A little territorial, are we? Sneaky, sneaky. Well, I mean, they still ended up divorced. And apparently he's gay and, and just realized it, you know, recently, but. Is he a straight gay man? Me and my ex were so petty. There was a time we argued so bad to the point where we gave each other silent treatment. But then I realized I had to be up by 5 a.m. the next morning because I had to catch a flight. 
The problem is I usually don't wake up to the sound of alarms. I need somebody to shake me out of my sleep. So I guess you could say my ex was like my human alarm, <laughs> but I'm petty. I didn't want to break my silence first, so I took out a pen and paper. <laughs> I wrote, please wake me up at 5 a.m. And I put it by her phone so I know she would see it before she went to sleep. The next morning, I wake up and I look at my phone. That says 9 a.m. I was mad, of course, because at that point, I missed my flight. I see my ex sleeping and I'm about to wake her up to ask her why she ain't wake me up. But I look by her phone and I see she wrote something back on the paper. The paper said, wake up, it's 5 a.m. <laughs> Oh, wow. All of that because you didn't want to break the silent treatment first. All you had to do was just swallow your pride a little bit. Never give in. Never, never, never. But then again, you wouldn't be petty. Subscribe!